us how you were encouraged in working on this message. Mm, well, uh, the most encouraging thing that I I found in in preparing and preaching this sermon is that in the throne of grace I I can find the supernatural resources for for do both things, make the message and make the man. Andre. I like how you uh, highlighted the basis uh, that we go to the throne of grace not in our achievements or what we've done well, but on the grounds of Christ and what we lay down there is our sin. And, uh, I really appreciate how that was encouraging. Yeah, for me it was recognizing our weakness you said and just like the pressures and trials and the reminder that yeah like there's grace and we can go and, and get help and he's for us you know? similar similar to what the brothers have said but the encouragement to the invitation to come to God and not to give but to receive I think you brought that out well that's a good word yeah, similar to that, like this idea of, of allowing ourselves to be ministered to uh, before trying to minister to God or to others. All right. Now, David, what's uh, something, an area where you need to get better at? Well, first I've seen that handle better the time. I, I use only 15 minutes. I have 10 minutes more. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That. That's like a new thing like, yes. that we have. Students going way <laughs> short this year. Like that has <laughs> never been the problem before. <laughs> We're always having to tell people like, sit down. <laughs> Go ahead, Andre. Um, I was just, uh, I thought maybe in this context we're be preaching to leaders so maybe I, I didn't quite get that it was specifically that for leaders, but mm -hmm. uh, I had a hard time following the homiletical arrangement. Mm -hmm. I didn't know when you were going into points, mm -hmm. what your points were. Um, I, I was pretty lost. I mean, I could tell where you were in the text, but I didn't know actually what your moves were in the sermon. Mm -hmm. So if you said them, mm -hmm. either repeat them, state them a little, you know, state mm -hmm. them a little more clearly and give a pause or something like that, but yeah, mm -hmm. arrangement-wise was, was challenging to follow. Actually, that was, I'm going to say it just because I, I think it is helpful to hear maybe when a couple people have the same thing, but mm -hmm. uh, the main thing I had down was the homiletical structure I had. Mm -hmm wasn't sure what that was for you. Um, I, th I understood your main point to be we have a high priest. Si. Yes. And so with that, I think one, one word potentially of improvement is that I thought the main point of the passage was let us hold fast the confession mm -hmm. because the having a high priest mm -hmm. supports that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So for what it's worth, uh, mm -hmm. All right. Um, for me, I, I, like it was great content, but I, I found it all to be aimed at my head, and it was very intellectual. But you never like, especially with like, come to this throne of grace, like with confidence. You never brought up like why I wouldn't, right? Like what prevents me from going to the throne of grace or from going to it confidently? And seeing as how we all are in this room. Like, yeah, I get that Jesus died for my sins, um, but sometimes just knowing that there's still this barrier of when I don't go to the throne of grace confidently, and you didn't touch on those. Again, like, I think I'm more of, like, that heart, subjective part of this passage and, and how people would be following you intellectually, but it's like, okay, but how do I actually do that on Tuesday morning or whatever today is uh, when I... Thursday, geez, um, when I wake up and I'm tired.
tired and you know what I did stumble in sin and I'm just feeling condemned and all these other things hmm. so your main thing was more emotive appeal yes more emotive appeal thank you hmm. Andre you got another one I don't uh, David one was I I wasn't sure what your argument was mm-hmm. you stated it early but it was fast I think okay. and it was long mm-hmm. and you and co- kind of complex mm-hmm. and you only said it once yes. so like I think I got about halfway mm-hmm. writing it down and then you moved on to something mm-hmm. and so like I was like oh shoot, like mm-hmm. <laughs> what am I gonna do so what I started to write down was we need to be aware we have a great high priest we can come to for supernatural res- I, like that's as far mm-hmm. as I got mm-hmm. we need to be in like yeah. so um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that was it but whatever it was like it wasn't anything that like you repeated it and then you started to use it later like we have supernatural resources mm-hmm. um, but it wasn't like the one thing that was just really bright shiny clear mm-hmm. So I think about yeah, how okay. you can do that. Caleb, you got another one? Uh-huh. Uh, this is a, a somewhat minor content feedback here with the throne of grace. I was just curious. One of the questions I had in my mind was, what does that mean? What is that throne? I mean, is that an illusion to... Maybe you touched on that. I missed mm-hmm. it, but... But just maybe a little explanation on that could have been helpful. Um, and I realize this is your second time preaching in English, which, mm-hmm. my gosh, that was amazing for your second time preaching mm-hmm. in English. Uh, having said that, I did feel like it was kind of like just dry and monotone and just da-na, da-na, da-na. So just some mm-hmm. variation with that. Mm-hmm. And that'll come. That'll come. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, David, what was uh, maybe something that since you've been here just two weeks now that you were trying to do in this sermon um, that you thought like helped you or that you did kind of put in there and that was a good thing or yes. Uh, first, I think that uh, I tried to 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 do something that that many time ago uh, uh, an instructor of, of a workshop uh, 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 said to me that I have to try that if I'm going to use an, an introduction try to, to close it to like I start with something and I have to finish with that that I complete the circle I, I, I try to try to do that with the, the the ethos thing, the uh-huh. make the man and make the message. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I noticed that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I just like the uh, uh, the ethos thing and then throwing up the concept of the word shoes and just mm-hmm. tying it to us, connecting it to us, and that. I think that's good. Yeah, I thought your introduction was good for its simplicity and brevity. Mm-hmm. So you had in four and a half minutes already done your introduction, uh, hit the context of the book, like the historical situation and the literary context, read the passage and stated your argument all within four and a half minutes. So, um, brevity is like an important aspect of introduction. So I thought you did that well to like get us right into the text, um, mm. to just get us moving with your argument, so. Mm. Yes. I appreciated, David, uh, appreciated your tone, mm-hmm. especially when you were talking about coming to the throne of grace. Um, it, I think it matched the invitation of the passage to approach God and that he has a disposition of grace towards us, I thought. Um, 
you brought me into that with, with even the manner in which you uh, were preaching at that point. That was strong. DC. Yeah, uh, I thought your, you know, you just seemed very comfortable and confident up there. Which, once again, second time speaking in English or preaching in English, like that was that was really impressive. And, and to that tone part, like it definitely was gentle. Mm-hmm. Andre, I agree. I thought the tone matched the text. Uh, I thought your cup analogy uh, was good. I think there still might be an objection that you could concede or refute or something like that at some point and use it to make it stronger. But it was a time uh, in your sermon where you became very comfortable. You were looking up at us more Mm -hmm. and less down. Mm -hmm. Uh, Your tone and pace became more dynamic. Mm -hmm. And you just seemed very free. And it was a really interesting uh, kind of illustration. So I thought it worked. So like, that doesn't mean that the temptations aren't real, just because mm-hmm. it's over bread. Um, so I thought that was like a high point uh, in your sermon, refuting, and, and it was done in an attempt to refute another objection. Well, he was God. How, that can't be anything. And you demonstrated that they could still be royal. So anticipating objections and attempting to refute them um, that was a great uh, part of your sermon. One of, the, one of the points you brought up, this is a content, um, a statement of con- content that I appreciated. You, at some point in the sermon, you brought out that the way we hold fast the confession is by approaching the throne of grace. That's a simple thing, but mm-hmm. you brought out that detail, that connection, the logical connection, which is really good we need to know how we hold fast the confession is by keeping on approaching God's throne of grace that was good yeah similar to, to what you said I thought the um, your introduction just worked like just bringing up something that we all recently had experienced and then raising like okay but how are we supposed to do this high calling of message in hand um, so I thought the intro was just a good job of, of pulling us in David Cartwright, uh, not David, David Salgado, (laughs) Under Fire, Video (laughs) One, great job.